Seattle can be an absolute great place to live, but in today's video, I'm gonna go over 10 reasons why you might want to avoid Seattle. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm Bryce Greenleaf. I'm a local real estate agent here in the greater Seattle area, and I love making videos all about what it's like living over here in Seattle and what you should expect when you're moving over this way. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell so you get notified whenever I make a new video. I love helping you guys out and getting your calls and texts and emails for those of you that are moving over this way or are thinking about moving over here and specifically need help with real estate. I am a local real estate agent, um, so I love helping you guys out, finding that right home, picking the right area for you and guiding you through that whole process. So if you've got any questions or anything I can do to help along those lines, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen and I'd be more than happy to sit down and talk with you. But like I said, on this video, I'm gonna go over 10 reasons why you might wanna avoid Seattle. All right, so number one, and it gets talked about all the time, is the weather here. So it completely depends on you as a person and what you prefer. So personally, I love the weather here, but there are a lot of people that don't like the weather here. So one common misconception is we're one of the rainiest cities in the country. I've gone over this multiple times in other videos. We are not even in the top 10 in terms of rainiest cities, in terms of we're actually like number 30 in terms of the largest cities in the United States. We're like number 30 on the list for the most rain. So it's not even close, but what some people do have a problem with over here is the amount of gray weather that we get. So we get a decent amount of actual rainy days, just not a ton of rainfall. So with those rainy days comes a lot of gray and cloudy days with a little bit of a drizzle, kind of a misty rain. So a lot of gray days and not nearly as much sun. In Seattle, we see sun on average about 165 days a year and the rest of the year, you're gonna get quite a bit of gray. And a lot of that sun is centered through the summer months, uh, which is almost every single day. So really in the fall, spring, winter, those months, you're gonna see a lot of gray weather. You're not gonna see the sun all that much. You could go a week or so without even seeing the sun. So that's something to consider if you're somebody that absolutely loves the sun, 365 days a year, you wanna see that, that sun out there in the sky beaming down. This might not be the right place for you because we do get a lot of gray overcast weather. All right, and number two is the allergies around here. So I personally suffer from seasonal allergies pretty bad. So when I go out and mow my lawn, I am paying for it the next day, really. So uh, if you've got seasonal allergies, that might be something that you gotta take into account when you're coming over here. There's a lot of pollen, specifically tree pollen and grass pollen, the two most common around here and the two most that are probably gonna affect you if you are somebody that suffers from seasonal allergies. So, uh, you know, I personally have to take Allegra to get over my seasonal allergies. I know a lot of people take, you know, other things, Zyrtec, Claritin, all that kind of stuff, but that is a problem over here uh, because of everything we have around us. There is a lot of pollen living in the Pacific Northwest. So it is something that if you deal with seasonal allergies, you're gonna have to deal with quite often. Really our high pollen season is from February to September. So it's a good chunk of the year uh, that you might have to be dealing with that. Now there are plenty of days where I personally don't have problems with my allergies, uh, especially if I'm inside or doing you know things indoors really when it flares up for me is when I'm outside like mowing the grass or working in the yard, stuff like that, or in really high pollen days. If it's floating around quite a bit, then it can get me too. But I don't necessarily suffer from it every day, um, but it is definitely something to take into account if you suffer from seasonal allergies. All right, and number three is bad drivers. So uh, this is very common around here that people know that Seattle has a lot of bad drivers. Uh, you think with the amount of rainy days that we get, a lot of times we have slick roads, you don't see the sun all that much, like I said, you think people around here would be used to it and be able to drive really well in those conditions. Well, they're not. And you know, a lot of people that are over here have not grown up here, have moved over here from other states. Um, so there's really not as many locals and natives necessarily uh, that you might think that would be used to driving in the rain. But when it rains over here, the road gets wet, uh, traffic makes a big turn and it takes a lot longer to get everywhere. Everything slows down. Uh, there's a lot of accidents all over the freeways on I-5, on I-405, I-90. There's accidents everywhere every single day that causes a lot of traffic jams and backups. So drivers over here, definitely not the best. Um, so you can account for that in your daily commute. If you're commuting a ways into Seattle for work and, or into another city for work, uh, sometimes it can take a little bit longer than you'd expect because there is a uh, accident blocking a couple of the left-hand lanes or the right-hand lanes on the freeway. 
All right, and number four, and this might surprise a lot of you, but Seattle is the least air conditioned large metro area in the entire country. So uh, Seattle on average, about 44% of homes in the Seattle area have air conditioning. Now that is really, really low compared to the rest of the country. Now, traditionally growing up, it wasn't an issue as for me, you know, as a kid in the, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, it was really never a problem uh, because we didn't get as much heat as we do now. So just recently, uh, two months ago, we had the worst heat wave in Seattle history where we got over 100 degrees three days in a row. I've never seen that. Obviously, Seattle itself has never seen that. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll see if that's a trend moving forward. But even the years previous, the last few years, it's seeming like it's getting hotter and hotter every year. Uh, every once in a while, we'll get a streak of a few days of hot temperatures where you really wish you had AC. And uh, we are in that same boat. So uh, portable AC units and window AC units were flying off the shelves this year. It was hard to even find any because everybody was out of stock. Um, and so in terms of central AC in the home, only 44% of homes have that here in the Seattle area. So something you got to factor in if you're moving over here, you definitely want AC. You know, you can shop for homes with AC. There's going to be a lot of homes, like I said, that you're looking at that don't have it. So you might want to factor that into your costs, your out-of-pocket costs after you buy that home, if that's something that's going to be necessary for you to put that AC in. All right, and number five on my list is the bad traffic. So this kind of goes along with the bad drivers I talked about before, but traffic over here is pretty bad. So uh, we are really landlocked between the Puget Sound and Lake Washington, specifically if you're talking about uh, the city of Seattle. Now, if you go up, up further north in Snohomish County or down further south in Pierce County, it widens out a little bit, but still not that much. Traffic is bad everywhere. The freeways get really backed up. There are people that work in Seattle and commute from 30 to 40 miles away on a daily basis. A lot of people that do that. So traffic does back up and we don't have enough space on the freeways necessarily to support all of this. And public transportation is not that great over here either. So there is a ton of traffic. You can spend a lot of time sitting in bumper to bumper if you're commuting a long ways. So that's definitely something if you're moving over here, you've got to consider your work location and then figure out where you're going to move to from there and figure out those traffic patterns. Because, you know, if you, you live, maybe you live 20 miles away from Seattle or from where you work, but it could take you over an hour to actually get there in rush hour time. So definitely something you got to take into account when you're moving over here. All right. And number six is the homelessness and drug problem. So this is specifically to the city of Seattle. When I talk about this, I'm not talking about any of the surrounding suburbs for the most part. Um, there are some great suburbs that do not have any of these issues, but the city of Seattle and downtown Seattle specifically have bad homelessness and drug problems. You will walk around the city and you can see needles on the ground. There are tent cities everywhere. There are homeless people now building little homes out of wood pallets on the side of the road. Um, so the city is very dirty. It does not get cleaned up. There's trash everywhere. Um, so if you're thinking about moving to Seattle, the city of Seattle specifically might not be the best spot for you if that's something that is going uh, to affect you in a negative way and you don't want to see that on a daily basis. So you might want to consider one of the surrounding suburbs. Most of the surrounding suburbs outside of Seattle are growing faster than the city of Seattle itself because a lot of people no longer want to move or live within the city of Seattle. So definitely something you got to take into account when you're moving over this way is whether you want to be right in Seattle and deal with that homelessness and drug problems or you want to move out to a surrounding suburb where you don't have to deal with that. All right, and number seven, reason why you might want to avoid this area is the higher cost of living. So if you're coming from somewhere like New York or California or maybe one of these other large uh, metro areas like maybe Chicago or Boston, something like that, it might not be a high cost of living to you because you're probably used to it. But for those of you that are moving from other locations around the country, Seattle probably is gonna have a pretty high cost of living compared to what you're used to. And what I'm talking about specifically is home prices. Uh, the mean home price in Seattle itself is 864,000 right now. Uh, this is September of 2021. Now there are plenty of other suburbs that have a little bit cheaper home prices, some that have median home prices around five, 550 and then there are some suburbs like Bellevue that median home prices are 1.6 million so kind of all over the board but the city of Seattle specifically is about 864 right now so it's a bit more expensive than the most 
than the majority of the country. That, so that might not be something that you're used to. And then that also factors in cost of living is like commutes. So for those of you, like I said, if you're commuting a long distance to work, you might be spending a lot in gas to get down there, especially sitting in traffic if you're driving an hour to and from work every day. So that's definitely something that factors in if you're somebody that's not living close to where you work. All right, and number eight reason why you might wanna avoid this area is there is a ton of construction. Now I know a lot of cities are dealing with this right now, population growth, there's a lot of people moving to everywhere. There's a lot of people moving to Seattle, there's a lot of people moving to Idaho, to lots of different areas. So that's one thing that you have to deal with with that growth in population is there is a lot of construction everywhere. So that can be another thing that can delay your commute if you're waiting in a construction zone to get through. Uh, that can affect where you're living if they're building a new development. So on my street, uh, just down the street from me, they are building a new development of 220 homes right now. So I know that's gonna affect a lot of the people that are right next to it uh, with all the noise going on. So if that's definitely something you gotta consider, a lot of construction going around here that can bring a lot of noise, delays in traffic times, commute times, things like that. All right, and number nine on my list here is the wildfire smoke. So this is getting worse and worse, it seems every single year is as there are more and more wildfires around us, they blow right into Seattle and settle right in here and make really dense smoke, usually every summer for a period of time. I mean, it's not, obviously not the whole summer, not at all, but you could go a week with having really, really smoky conditions here in Seattle. We've experienced it this year. So whether that's a fire from Eastern Washington that's blowing over the Cascades here into the Seattle area, or even from Oregon and California, we are getting smoke from those wildfires as well that are blowing north right up into Seattle here. So, um, it, it, you know, it just, there's no way to predict it for sure. Obviously when there's wildfire close, there's smoke that's gonna blow over here, but um, you know, some summers in the past, we didn't have, really have any wildfire smoke, but it seems like the last few, we've had stretches of a week or so, uh, multiple times during the summer, uh, where there is a decent amount of smoke that's getting blown over here. So definitely something you wanna consider in those times. It's hard to go outside and enjoy anything because of the breathing conditions just are not great. Uh, so typically you're staying inside a lot more during those smoky conditions. Like I said, it can last a few days, up to a week, something like that. It's not gonna last the whole summer. It's not gonna ruin your summer, but it can take a couple of days out of your plans if you were planning to go, go hiking or do something outside and you might not wanna do that in the smoke. All right, and the last and final thing on my list, number 10 reason why you might wanna avoid this area is the city of Seattle and all the surrounding suburbs are not prepared for snow at all. So we don't get a lot of snow. Uh, that's not something you really have to deal with all that much here, but it seems like in the past few winters, we get one decent snowstorm a year. And when I say snowstorm, I mean it might snow for a day or two or three, and we might have snow on the ground for four or five days. In that four or five day period, there are not anywhere near enough snow plows around here, so everything shuts down. So last year, we had a little bit of a snowstorm. Um, it snowed for, I think, two, two and a half days, and then it was on the ground for a good four or five days. For about three days, everything stopped. It was over a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, everything shut down. Real estate stopped, there were no showings anywhere, all the open houses stopped, uh, businesses closed, nobody could get anywhere because the streets were packed with snow and there's not enough snow plows to deal with it. So. That is one concern. Um, like I said, it doesn't happen very often, really just once a year at the most. It seems like right now, in some, some years you won't get it at all. You just get a little bit of a drizzle of snow and it'll melt uh, six hours later or something like that. So, uh, but sometimes we do get those, those snowstorms and it, you know, it's hard to, to navigate, especially if you don't have four wheel drive, you might be stuck in your home for three or four days. So city of Seattle is not prepared for any of that, not just Seattle, but all the surrounding suburbs. They're not prepared to handle that. Same with ice uh, on the roadways. They do have, you know, de-icer and sand they throw down, but still not enough vehicles to cover all of the streets that we need to. So it can factor in a few days out of the winter for you. All right, well, this wraps up my list of 10 reasons why you might wanna avoid Seattle. As you can see, uh, if you've watched my previous videos, there are plenty of great reasons to move here. It is a beautiful area. There's so much to offer here in the Pacific Northwest, but there of course are some downsides as well, like I just went over. So evaluate what's most important to you. And like I said, if you're thinking about moving over here, if you've got questions about what it's like moving over here, questions about specific areas, or you need help, buying a home over this way, going through that process, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. More than happy to help you through that process. 
uh, and sit down, have a chat with you and kind of figure out what's most important to you and see how we can best navigate the situation for you. But appreciate you guys watching this one and feel free to check out either one of these videos here for more information on what it's like living over here in the Seattle area. All right, I'll see you on the next one.